It's time to meet Clifton. With your host, Ray Grabowski. Where's Ray? Hey, there he is. Uh, thank you, Di. Thank you very much. Good evening. Hello and welcome once again to meet Clifton. The show where your hometown is on display. I'm Ray and this is my co-host for this evening and our producer, Diane Gangiolin. How are you tonight, Diane? Great, Ray. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Good. We might keep you. Um, it's been a fun night. Yes, well, a great night. But don't worry, George will be back next time. Okay. Um, as usual, we have a lot to cover in such a short amount of time. However, before we bring out our guest, let's hear some music from the, our friends at Two Tones. Uh, hit it, guys. Tonight on Meet Clifton, Ray sits down with Director of Podiatry at St. Mary's Hospital, Dr. Michael Subic. From the Moose Lodge in Clifton, Chris Senek, Seth Rostin, and Tom Miller. And Projects Coordinator for the City of Clifton Health Department, Jennifer Kidd, with Melanie Chefchik from Montclair State University. And music by the Two Tones. All this and more on Meet Clifton. Thank you for joining us, and thanks to the Two Tones for another wonderful song. They always make the show so much fun. Well, Diabetes is a very serious issue here in the United States. Over 18 million people have it, and approximately one person loses a lower limb to diabetes every 30 seconds. So here to explain more is Dr. Michael Zubik uh, from St. Mary's Hospital to explain a little bit about it. Uh, Doc, welcome to the show. I appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me. Um, I know diabetes is, is a very big, um, we actually we were talking before the show that in this area, diabetes is very, very common. Um, yes, the prevalence is rather high uh, uh, nationwide, but in this region it's, it's higher than the average. Uh, we're seeing a lot of complex uh, issues related to diabetes, including infections, admissions to hospital right. that require amputation, and uh, salvage of limbs. Right. And so we'll, that's what we're here to talk about. Um, diabetes, you know, why are they vulnerable to foot problems? And this is your expertise. Yeah. So. Un unfortunately, diabetics have a condition called neuropathy. And neuropathy is when the limb is not sensate like it would be for your eye. They don't feel sharp pain, they don't feel light touch, they don't feel a blister. And then that develops into an infection that becomes a systemic manifestation uh, of uh, an infectious process that causes them to become ill and even having bacteria in the blood that could be life right. threatening. So, so their wounds, I understand that you know, it could take a long time for a wound to heal, and probably that's a symptom why they would come in. Why so long? Uh, patients, unfortunately, don't have the best sense of vision sometimes. They can't see their limb. Uh, they can't see the infection. They don't feel ill. There's a delay in the body's response to an right. infection. And unfortunately, they take some time uh, to come into the office, and uh, by the time they come in, we provide education, support, management, and hopefully try to keep them out of the hospital. Right. So for people watching the show, someone has a cut, what should they do if they notice it's not healing? Immediately call their physician okay. uh, and they will uh, be seen by their primary doctor who will then make a determination if it's treated best in their office or referred to a specialist like myself. Right, um, now I know Diane, yeah, my co-host I, I have a question for you, Dr. Subek. The oxygen chamber, how does that help in healing the wounds for your patients? So we have at St. Mary's General Hospital a wound healing center that has been in business for over 20 years. I've been a part of it for 17 and the medical director for more than five. And we have a chamber that provides high levels of oxygen to the patient's body mm -hmm. that supersaturates their blood with oxygen to help the healing occur faster and more predictable. Okay, thank you. All right, so, so let's, let's talk a little about prevention. Um, what are some tips that you know, the people can do to keep their feet healthy? I don't want to say feet healthy because it's diabetes, but yeah. how, do, how do we all in, in, you know, make all this work? We would like patients to stay out of the office for the emergencies and come in for the regular visits. Right. So we'd like to see them every few months in the office to check their feet every night, to place a mirror on the floor, to put, hang their foot over the mirror to look at, at the bottom of their foot, to look inside of their shoe. I can't tell you how many times patients come in with wounds on their foot and they have a nail penetrating through the bottom of their shoe into their foot and uh, just feeling inside of the shoe for any 
loose bits their pet may have left inside or their, uh, their uh, grandson may have left inside their shoe. So look inside the shoe, look at the, uh, on the outside, look at your feet, um, and come into the office for regular visits. Right, now, Doc, you're, also, you're a podiatrist, but you're also a surgeon, right? Yes. So just explain podiatrist so that we understand what we're talking about to the people. Yeah, so I'm a podiatrist with advanced training for limb salvage and reconstruction. Okay. So I am board certified in reconstructive rear foot and ankle surgery and also in wound healing. So I would treat patients with bad fractures, uh, apply fixators on the outside of the legs, or apply fixation on the inside with bone graft, or unfortunately sometimes also amputate if the limb is not salvageable. But I work collaboratively with vascular surgery, right. plastics, and orthopedics. Okay. So we just answered two questions because mm -hmm. the first step would be to come and see you and then you would refer them actually to yourself technically because uh, you do both. But in essence, a podiatrist would recommend now a foot surgeon. Correct, which yes. Is, which of course you do both. Um, now I understand in diabetes, you know, next step of course when you can't do it is amputation. Um, so why are toe and foot amputations necessary? So toe and foot amputations are very necessary part of what I do because we try to save the whole patient right. and not the sick limb sometimes if it's too far gone. Right. Uh, we want to also prevent patients from going to a higher level amputation like a below knee amputation right. which unfortunately has a five-year survival rate of about 40 percent. So diabetics with that high level of amputation ha puts more exertion on their heart and unfortunately uh, does not bode well for their uh, long-term life. Right. Now, now a question I have, let's just say it starts at the toe level. So maybe you take off two toes. Now can that stop it uh, and it won't go any further or is, is there a big process here after this is done? It's a good question. There's different reasons that one has an amputation. It can be related to a traumatic crush injury or an infection or a circulatory condition. So each condition that causes that problem will have different determinants as to how that would actually go on and evolve and heal. So infectious lesions uh, can be treated just with a single toe amputation. Gangrene, unfortunately, may require the front of the foot to be amputated. Right. And this is what we don't want to have happen. We don't want that. So we want them to visit so the doctor. Essence, if you want people to avoid amputation, what do, what do we have to recommend here? As we spoke about before, find a really good primary care doctor that you uh, get along well with and you can, you can open up to. and. Uh, chat with on a regular basis, have them see regularly, uh, uh, see your podiatrist and become a part of a team with that podiatrist and your medical doctor as they will tell you the best ways to manage your condition, uh, provide you with good shoe care and good overall foot hygiene, right. driving between your toes, cutting your nails straight across, basic issues like that we would review. Okay, now is, is it a good practice maybe when you go for your physical each year? Uh, I'm sure the doctors must look at your feet, I think. You know, they check for um, fungus or things like that. They would be able to ascertain if there's a beginning of something. Most certainly. Cardiologists are very well known for this. They will actually press into the patient's leg to look for edema, right. feel the pulses in the leg. So years, uh, when, years ago when I first started practice, uh, doctors may not have been that astute about checking the feet, but now all physicians really do check the feet, look for issues with circulation, skin cracks, fissures, infections. Right. Uh, nail fungus or edema also, right. which is a sign so, of more And how about PAD, uh, you know, uh, pulmonary, pul per peripheral, peripheral arterial, arterial disease. disease. That's it. Peripheral arterial disease is a very significant uh, issue now. And uh, we have a number of specialties that, that are diagnostic and also therapeutic and managing it. So we have a lot of coverage in our area, and we're lucky in this area to have so many good doctors yeah, we have that can provide the service. Um, and you don't have to leave the region, you can stay in the region to be treated. And it's a simple test. It really is. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a blood pressure cuff placed in the leg, right. uh, a little bit of pressure, uh, a few seconds, and the, the numeric values come out are extremely important to your overall foot health and, and uh, uh, health of the, your blood vessels and heart. Okay, and, and because we're on di diabetes and we covered all of this, diet, exercise, how important? So low impact, repetitious activity is important, like okay. uh, biking, elliptical, Swimming, we forget about swimming mm -hmm. this, right, in this swimming area. Swimming. Uh, joining a gym with the pool is important. Using the stairs when you can. Uh, check, you can, you can use your phone as a pedometer to check your distances. Try to achieve 10,000 steps a day. That's the goal. Um, try to use your stairs. Uh, look for uh, uh, the furthest parking spot away from the store and walk in. Right. Uh, I tell my patients regularly when you go into your local supermarkets to walk in down, up and down every aisle first with the shopping cart and then go back to the beginning and start to shop. <laughs> so, of course, you're fortunate because 
you impulse buy. Yeah. <laughs> we don't tell the men to do that other other box stores. No, I appreciate that. And, and for people at home, uh, this is a lot of good advice, and you really have to take care of yourself. Um, I, I like to thank St. Mary's for sending Dr. Subic mm -hmm. down. You know, it's a great hospital in our area. Uh, if you ever need anything, and of course, the doctor's name will be listed. And if you have any other questions, um, I'm sure that you could contact the hospital or, or doctor himself. Thank you so I much. I appreciate for coming on. Thank, thank you, you, Diane. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. <laughs>
a pull tab machine in our premises, right. legally run by the state. Right. We spend vast amounts of money, not only in the city, the state, and the county. And we, we never get recognition for it, not that we look for it, but we always look for a thank you for whoever you donate money to. Right. I can go on. We've, we won community service awards at our state conventions and our national conventions so many years, it's not even funny, of all the work that is recognized by 657 and their, right. and their, and their chapter. No, and, and we're real well, proud of in Clifton to have the moose here. O over the years, some of the things that we've done for Clifton, right. um, about five years ago, we bought a thermal imaging camera for the fire department. We asked them what they needed. Right. So we went and we did that. Uh, several years before, we purchased four bicycles for the Clifton Police, Police Bike right, Patrol. Right, the community. Um, we just recently hosted the uh, Clifton Mustang Midget football team's year-end dinner. Right. Uh, we, we try to specialize with children. Right. So with high important. school teams, Absolutely. high school clubs, any of the, any of the younger clubs, Right. Uh, we have our hall open for a free donation if they'd want to use it to, to have a, a, a dinner. Or, or uh, we fit about 150 people, so it couldn't be a huge dinner, but it's right. still well, a nice size right. dinner. And, and one more question, Chris, I just want to ask you, membership, how is that possible? Okay, well, the first um, criteria is you have to have a sponsor. So you, you, what you need to do is to get in touch with the current member of the, of the, of the lodge, right. and, um, and what they could do is they could walk you through the process and right. you can come in there to, to see what we're all about to meet the member, okay. members and then um, if everything goes well you could okay so in essence you have to be asked and then approved by the membership yes Correct. so yeah. okay and you know I mean we like we like to know that all these are civic organizations you know they have, to have new members so if, if something interests you please look into this or meet with some of the members because um, civic organizations are big in Clifton uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming on I appreciate it I think we learned a lot um, Let's hear what the updates have for this week. Hello, Clifton and friends. Welcome to the updates. Well, just like in October, we had the Monster Mash. In April, we're having a Bunny Bash, and that is going to be Saturday, March 24th. Compliments of the Clifton Recreation Department at Nash Park. They will have breakfast with Mr. Bunny, visit with Mr. Bunny, Mrs. Bunny's PlayStation, but the Bunny Hop and the 12th Annual Easter Bonnet Contest. So please be there. It's March 24th, 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And please go to their website for more information. Starts at 9.30 in the morning. And on April 10th, they're having a Jigsaw Puzzle Contest. Only costs $5 per team. And that is on April 10th. The doors open at 5.30. The contest is from 6 to 7.30 p.m. So test your abilities and complete a jigsaw puzzle. Hi everyone, uh, the Clifton Health Department will be having some upcoming screenings. One is a free adult vision screening. It'll be on Monday, March 19th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, there will also be a bone density screening on Wednesday, March 21st from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, this one is $12 per person. The other one is a free hearing screening on Thursday, April 5th from 12.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Um, the hearing screening and the vision screening is free of charge. However, uh, registration is required for all of them. So please call the Clifton Health Department or if you have any questions, you can call as well. The phone number is 973-470-5760. Thank you. We're looking forward to seeing you at some of the fun events and some of the healthy events. So welcome to spring. Welcome back to Meet Clifton. The Clifton Health Department is a vital part of our community and provides a wide range of services. Here to give us a bit of an insight into one aspect of these services is Project Coordinator Jennifer Kidd, and with her is Melanie Stepchik, the Instructional Specialist in Public Health at Montclair State University. Hope I got that right. Welcome, yes. ladies. Hi, Ray. Thanks for coming Thank on. Thank you. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Um, we're having them on today because we want to talk a little bit about the Clifton Health Department. Uh, they're in the process of completing a community health assessment, a CHA. Yes. So can you tell us what a community health assessment is? 
Sure, so a community health assessment is really the foundation with which we understand the health problems that a community faces. Okay. So it involves gathering data and information about health outcomes, health behaviors, as well as the resources that a community has. Right. Um, so we'll be looking at all of those things for the city of Clifton and it'll culminate in a written report that summarizes all the findings. Okay, so why do we, why do we need this in Clifton? So um, a community health assessment allows us to develop strategies okay. to address um, the health needs of the community. Uh, the health department is also applying for national accreditation right. and um, so the CHA is a required document for na national accreditation. It will help us not only show that we are meeting or exceeding um, the standards that are set by the Public Health Accreditation Board for local health departments, but will also put us in a good spot to uh, be um, very desirable candidates for grant funding in the right. future. So, but how does that help the city? Has a benefit besides accreditation? Any other ways? Well, it will help us uh, strategize priority areas right. um, so that we can address those needs um, that are shown to be most, you know, widely reported by residents as we go through the assessment process. Okay. Well, now, now, is this the first time that we're ever going through this? So the health department has collaborated in the past, um, over the last several years, with the Passaic County Public Health Partnership right. in conducting a community health assessment, but that was for the entire county. And uh, we feel that since Clifton is such a large and diverse city, uh, we want to address the needs and see what are the, the needs um, and expectations of our residents okay. here in the city. All right, so we have the assessment, so just to understand a little better, what are some of the components? What makes this up? Okay, so we're gonna look at a lot of health data to start. So we'll look at what are the causes of disease and death that are common for residents in the city of Clifton. We'll look at some information about health behavior. So finding out what proportion of Clifton residents smoke cigarettes, for example. Oh. So we're gonna look at all that information, but what we're also really interested in are community perceptions around health. So we wanna hear from residents about what they think are the most pressing health issues in their neighborhood. Um, what do they think the health department should be focusing on or addressing? That's the kind of information that we really wanna get. And the way that we're gonna to try to, to get that information from residents is by conducting surveys. So that's something that's ongoing and we're okay. working on right now. Also doing some uh, interviews and focus groups with community leaders, decision makers, as well as residents. Okay, so for the residents to actively participate, you're, they're going to be contacted, right? Well, we have a survey. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Right. Okay, so, so we how have do you do that? we have a survey. It's called the Community Voice Initiative, and this is the perfect way for residents to share their voice um, in this process. And um, it's only about ten to twelve minutes to complete the survey. The survey is located um, downstairs um, in the main lobby here in the health department at our libraries, and they can also access it online. Okay. Uh, so that's the, the easiest way for us to get an understanding of their needs and expectations. Right. Oh, sorry, yeah. Can I add to that? Sure. that um, we, In order for us to be successful in this community health assessment process, we really strongly need residents to participate in this survey. This is their chance to, to be the voice of this. And um, we want to hear from residents in all different neighborhoods right. with all different backgrounds because that's the only way we're going to get a really complete picture of what's going right. on. So we're going to, when these things get rolling, we're going to actually really work hard with the community. Yes. With this. Oh yeah, we've already started. All right. So in essence, though, how does this going to how is it going to benefit the community in a way? Once that once this survey comes back, what are we really going to learn? So we're go ahead. You want to. Well, I think the survey itself asks a lot of questions like, what do you feel you have access to in your community? What are some of the maybe quality of life issues that well, you okay, face? Okay, that's, that's what I'm trying to, right? okay, and so we, trying to understand. Yeah, we can't address those, those things unless we know what they are. Okay. And I think the thing that's so interesting about Clifton is it's so large and there's so many distinct neighborhoods We're with their so own issues. And this survey allows us to get information for as local as the zip code. Right. So we can right. really look at a specific zip code and know what's going on okay. there. So it's very important. Yep. Very important. Yes. Um, now students, can they be involved or how, how do students get involved in this process? So I have an amazing <laughs> okay. uh, and very enthusiastic <laughs> bunch of students, at uh, public health students at Montclair State University who are enrolled in one of my courses this semester and what they're doing is really exciting. They're in teams 
going to each of the city's 16 census tracts and they're evaluating the built environment. So a lot of people are not familiar with what the built environment means. It means all the physical structures around us mm -hmm. and how they influence our health. So we have students that are going around walking in the neighborhoods and assessing walkability. So they're determining uh, how easy and how safe is it for a resident to walk around their neighborhood oh. for physical activity purposes. They're looking at the food environment. So what kind of uh, foods are available in, in someone's um, neighborhood. Do they mm -hmm. have access to fruits and vegetables? And if they do have access, are they quality? Are they affordable? Mm -hmm. So they're looking at all these really interesting factors for each of these census tracts, and then they're going to create a report for each census tract so then all of us can look at that and really kind of compare and contrast different neighborhoods. Right. Health so we can status. actually address the needs of certain areas in town mm -hmm. or different yep, particular uh, neighborhoods, neighborhoods yep. which is really good because mm -hmm. people don't even know that. And, mm -hmm. uh, so, how, so Jen, how long till this is completed? So we hope to have the final assessment completed by the end of the year. Like Melanie said, it's not just the survey, we're also going to be conducting focus groups, collecting secondary data, and um, conducting um, key informant interviews right. with community leaders. Uh, we have to pull all the data together, we have to analyze the data, it's, it's a very long process, but we're hoping that the whole assessment is complete uh, by the end of the year. Okay, well we have a great health department in Clifton. I like to brag about it, and of course with uh, Melanie's help, <laughs> uh, it could even be greater. So um, Now if the residents want to get more information, just as a final note, um, on this and other health things, how do they do that? Okay, so if residents want to help out with the assessment process and want to take the survey, the survey is located on the health department's Facebook page at Clifton Health. Okay. It's also going to be on the homepage for the city website. Um, they can contact me, jkid at cliftonnj.org uh, to obtain a copy, okay. or if they want to be involved in a focus group, they can email me at that address as well to sign up for a focus group or to get on our email mailing list. And like we said previously, the uh, hard copies of the surveys are also located okay. strategically throughout the city. All right, mm -hmm. so we'll make sure that we post this at the end of the show. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you as well for coming on. Thank so a lot you. of information I think is thank great you. for the community. Yeah. It's a good thing for us to have in the yeah. Yeah. Thank you uh, Stay tuned, we'll be right back. If I give my heart to you, I must be sure from the Okay, Me Clifton is done for this week, but we'll be back again before March is out for more of what makes Clifton a great town. We want to thank our guests for the cornucopia of information they were able to provide to us this evening. Unfortunately, George Silva couldn't make it tonight, so on his behalf, and from Diane, myself, and the rest of Me Clifton, remember, be good to your friends and family, respect your neighbors, keep Clifton close to your heart. This is a great city. Thank you, God bless, and good night.